ultimate international challenge continues. Great Britain versus Australia. Some of the most successful contenders in this country clash head on with some of the finest on offer from down under. For the pride and the glory of winning the Ashes. Standing between them and the coveted trophy, the greatest gladiators from Britain and the most awesome in Australia. The Battle of the Ashes is introduced by Ulrika Johnson and Mike Hammond. Welcome to another action-packed edition of Gladiators. Of course, it's our Ashes series, and this is round two, the best of the Aussies versus the best of the Brits. Last week, it was a bit of an all-Australian affair, but something tells me tonight is going to be just a little bit different. Well, I certainly hope so, Mike. We're looking for some British faces in the Ashes final. Let's see if I can whet their appetite by telling them that the overall winners of the Ashes will each receive £6,000. That's about £12,000 will each receive £2,000. That's about £4,000 Australian dollars. So there's all to play for. Let's meet tonight's contenders. Representing Australia, Catherine Arlo. And for the Brits, it's Hannah Owen. Welcome to the UK, Catherine. How are you feeling? I'm uh, not too bad. A little bit nervous, but I'm okay. Well, I'm hoping you're going to turn that nervous tension into power, although not too much power. Tell us what you do and where you're from. Um, I'm from Melbourne, Australia, and I'm a physiotherapist and a personal trainer. Ah, oh, so you're a fit girl, which is why you're here. How do you fancy your chances tonight? Because you're up against some pretty stiff competition. Well, yeah, um, there are a lot of great athletes here, so it's really a hit and miss, and whoever makes the least mistakes will probably end up the winner. Well, and great athletes and some great British gladiators. Now, who is it you like? Rhino and Saracen, is that right? Well, yeah. <laughs> well, you won't be meeting them tonight, but you'll be meeting some great British female gladiators. So we'll be looking out for you. The best of luck. Catherine Arlov. Hannah, you've got a really interesting career that has become very fashionable again. Tell us about that. Yeah, I'm a milliner. I've been doing it for five years. And a milliner is? A hat maker. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and you play rugby as well. Now, tell us a bit about the, the female rugby competition. Well, the rugby followers here. Tell us a bit about the, the British female rugby competition. Well, I've been playing for uh, nearly five years now, and I actually set up a club in Whitchurch. <laughs> and and uh, rugby in this country is the fast, fastest growing sport, officially. And your family are with you here tonight. Now, we've we got to find where they are in the audience. We've got a lot of people here, obviously, over there. Tell us who they are. I've got my husband here and my two little girls. Uh, one is one, she's over there, and, and a four-year-old. I'm a mum and dad and the rest of the folks, some of the rugby girls. Well, Hannah, we wish you all the best tonight. Let's wish Hannah the best, ladies and gentlemen. Good luck. Now it's time to meet the guys representing Australia, Paul Stubbs. And for Great Britain, it's Mark Everett. Paul, how are you feeling? Uh, not too bad, a bit nervous. Oh, you should be nervous. It's all very exciting. I was just thinking, you know, we've already got two Australians in the final, so I suppose you could sit back and relax now, couldn't you? No, I think they'll make it a bit harder now, so the second one doesn't get in. <laughs> well, I hope so, for our sake. Tell us what you do and where you're from. Uh, I'm a bricklayer. I live on the Gold Coast in Queensland. And, oh, nice part of the world. And um, how did you do in the Australian series? Uh, I got runner-up in series three. And so how do you feel about tonight? Nervous. <laughs> Just nervous? Fancy yeah. your chances? We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. We certainly will. Let's hear it for Paul Stubbs. Now, Mark, they tell me that you were the 95 champion here on Gladiators. Being in Australia, I didn't see that, but uh, you must be pretty good. It's a great feeling, Mike. I mean, absolutely excellent. We were talking backstage before the show started. Your life has changed quite a bit since everybody's seen you on the telly. Tell us about that. Yes, um, since last year, I've now got a baby boy. He's called Harlem, and he's in the audience. So I'd like to say a big hi to him. Also, I've got a new job working for the social services. Um, I'm a residential care worker, so I'd like to say hello to all the guys from Spalding Family Centre and Spring House. Right, so what's your best piece of apparatus tonight? What do you think you're going to do? Um, I quite enjoy the gauntlet, but my, I seem to excel on the eliminator. Well, I'm sure whatever you do, you're going to give your best. So, Mark, all the best tonight. Let's wish him all the best, ladies and gentlemen. Mark, well done. Well, the girls are now ready for 
for their first event, so let the games begin. Representing Australia, it's Catherine Arlo. And for the UK, it's Hannah Owen. And our gladiators, Lightning and Storm. Over to our referee, John Forsyth. Contenders, are you ready? Gladiators, are you ready? Three, two, one. And away first time, Lightning looking to zap Catherine and Storm, hoping to rain on Hannah's parade. And a slow start from both girls. Storm thunders and Lightning flashes. A double strikeout on Skytrack. Smoke gets in your eyes, especially if you're as fast as these two gladiators. They know all the tricks of the track. Blink and you'll miss the replay. Just on the crossover, Storm blows away the great British contender and Lightning follows suit straight after. An inauspicious start for the girls, nil-nil after just a few seconds of event one. First in the pecking order to chase Mark and Hunter on the trail of Paul and the boys blast into action. These guys are serious sky trackers. Condor and Hunter both failing to beat into the lead to their contenders. And Mark Everett leads for Great Britain. He knows ten winning points are waiting at the end of this course. And Hunter's tied up and out of the chase. Paul has a free run for home, but Mark's going to grab the glory and the maximum points. Mark first, Paul second to collect five. Fast hands and feet for that home win. In the replay, Mark's opened a yawning lead over Condor and Paul by the second crossover. Hunter's out of the frame. Mark with plenty of time to coast home for a superb starter. One event down, and the scores stand thus. Paul 5, Mark 10. Bloody. brought our Australian friends to experience a piece of genuine British history. We're at the Iron Bridge Gorge Open Air Museum here at Bliss Hill and behind us is the Iron Bridge itself. It was the first structure of its kind in the world. It was built in 1779 and it spans the River Severn using 378 tons of cast iron. It took three months to put up and it was designed by a guy called John Iron Mad Wilkinson. And you know what it said on his gravestone? No Hunter, what did it say on his gravestone? Rust in peace. <laughs> <laughs> rust. Rust in peace. Iron Bridge. I get rust. it. I get it. Representing the Aussies, it's Catherine. And for the Brits, it's Hannah. And our gladiators, Laser, Delta, and Glacier. <laughs> If you like nice but naughty mouth-watering treats, here's someone enjoying one. Our referee for this round, John Anderson. Contenders, ready! Contenders, ready! Three, two, one! Hannah, the rugby star. Old Glacier freezes her out. Catherine against Delta, dunks it anyway, lays a late for the ball, two points there. Hannah, back for another try. Catherine, body swerve, Laser can't cut her down, two more, and Hannah hits the deck at Delta's hand. 4-0 to Australia, Hannah, oh, John Anderson's blown up, something's happened. Delta's down, following her tackle on Hannah. And Catherine's still fired up for action, medical help is at hand. And while the man from the St. John's Ambulance Brigade checks her out, let's see what happened. Hannah, where the fresh ball comes wide, Delta's covering, brings her down, but smashes her face on the playing surface. John Anderson mooching over for a look. The medics giving Delta the final check, and she looks to be fit to carry on. And she needs a warm hand there from the crowd, and she gets it. A good sporting audience in this arena. There are 43 seconds remaining. Three, two... A 
four yeah. nil lead. And she made it six. Oh no, Catherine grounds the ball. Anna Luke's looking for a basket. Swept away by the Glacier. Laser can't tie up Catherine. Easy peasy for the Aussie. Six nil. And are back for more. Score proud to judgment. And Catherine beats Delta with the dash. Eight nil. Catherine, a national wrestling and judo champion, knows all the moves in this event too. Laser there this time at last. The Gladiator getting to grips. Anna against Glacier. She's had a frosty reception from Glacier since the start of this power ball. Didn't realize hell could be so cold. Catherine again. Laser electing for a direct action approach to this amazing Aussie. Less than 10 seconds to go. Hannah reloads. Goes wide. Glacier and Delta match her strike for strike. Delta downs her. Hannah not happy. But Catherine really plays without the performance. Hannah not given a chance to flash her rugby skills. But Catherine is the eight point heroine of that event. Hannah, I think your rugby expertise really paid off there. Yeah, I don't think I scored anything. I was quite disappointed. But she was just on me every second. It's a really hard game, isn't it? I mean, it, it looks fun on telly, but it's when they hit, they hit hard. That's the hardest game I've done so far. <laughs> We're both out of breath. Catherine, you were fairly psyched up for that round. Yeah. I'm due to like contact. I also play Aussie Rules football. And boy, has it helped. Because you can take those knots and stay on your feet. Well, I was standing here at ringside watching it. You guys were all over the floor. We have to check for the score now. John Anderson, please. Hannah, I'm afraid, did not score. No points to Hannah. And eight points to Catherine. Well done, Catherine. Congratulations. Well, she's pleased about that. And with three events to go, Catherine's off the mark, as you can see, while Hannah has yet to score. Round two for the guys. Playing on the blue for Great Britain, it's Mark. And on the red for Australia, Paul. Against our gladiators, Ace, Saracen and Vulcan. The biggest and the best. And Vulcan's there as well. Oh, even time for a game of one potato, two potato. It's crunch time on the Powerball pitch. This Aussie gladiator makes Ned Kelly look like Henry Kelly. Hello, this won't be a discussion Potter. about which shampoo they use. Oh, Ray. I thought not. Ray. 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 Well, let's play Ray. ball. Ball into action, denied by Aiton Saracen. But Mark sweeps through to Polypair. Great start by Britain. Mark against Vulcan. Makes a mockery of the Gladiator. Two more. Vulcan clearly vulnerable as Saracen tackles high. Stubbs pull out on the floor. Mark again. This is too easy. Vulcan obviously weighed down by that ridiculous hair. Paul reloads. Known some knocks down there. Great turn of speed. Misses one, but hits on the next. Two points with two glads trailing. Both guys reload. Mark trying the blind side. Paul scores, and Mark hammers home more humiliation for Vulcan. Back for more. 10-4 to score, and the only person who can tackle Mark is Paul. Ace spins ball out of the points. It's fast and furious down there. The contenders are fast, and the gladiators are furious. The crowd thinks it's easy, but these guys will dispute that. Into the fray, and Mark rubbing Vulcan's nose in it now, and Paul getting the special Saracen treatment. Mark again. Well, the Vulcan might as well take the next flight back to Sydney for all the good he's doing. Paul tussled out of the points again. Mark, if you've never seen a one-man decimation of a gladiator before, well, you have now. 18 points conceded by Vulcan, and this contender has certainly made his mark in gladiator history. And it must be said, this is one Vulcan who has shown no enterprise and should be beamed back to Oz as soon as possible. Without uh, getting your breath, first time past Vulcan, got the points. Second time, got the points. Third time, got the points. It just kept happening. Yeah, he made me angry. When we was waiting to start, he came over and pushed me. I thought he shouldn't have done that. I thought I'm going to score. And I did. You sure did. We'll get the complete count in just a minute from John Forsythe, our referee. Your fans are going wild over there. Stunty. I know we've got to be careful here because we're actually here in Birmingham. Two Aussies and a lot of Brits around us, but... Uh, it seemed to me as though most of the game you were being marked by two men. Two big men. <laughs> you could say that again. Absolutely. A very, very tough call, though. They're both very big guys and very fast. Yeah, they're very good at the game. OK, let's check on the scores now. John Forsyth. Paul picked up four points. And Mark picked up 18. <laughs> Whoa! A big round of applause for our challengers, Mark and Paul. Sustained an 
injury and this time it was you. What happened? Yeah, um, Ace took a tumble and as I jumped over him, as I landed, my knee went. After about three seconds, I got my composure back. Vulcan, you must be bitterly disappointed with your performance. You let Mark get away with a lot. Oh, shut up! I could have been away with me. I hate this place. The picture of a man not happy in his job. After two events, Paul moves up to nine. Mark steams up to an incredible 28. After two events out of the way, we still have another three, plus the Eliminator, of course. So join us after the break for more Ashes action here on Gladiator. The Ashes. The Ashes. One challenger against five Gladiators. Nobody said life was fair. First up, it's the female event, and representing Great Britain, it's Hannah. Against our gladiators, Glacier. Delta. Rio. Fury. And Storm. Well, let's look at the kind of punch Hannah will be packing in that gauntlet. She's a metre 70 tall and weighs in at 67 kilos. Three, two, one. Into the alley, the Ice Maiden with the ramrod. And Hannah gives her the slip. Next comes Delta with the power pads, getting down to action. But Hannah is up for it. British Grand Rio with the ramrods. Hannah pushing her wide, and Fury will be furious with that mistake. In sweeps the Storm, but Hannah's got incredible strength. The Storm is quickly blown out, and Hannah's got 10 points. Great gauntlet for this great Brit. Hannah, you hurt yourself. Where did you hurt yourself? Oh, but... <laughs> well, we'll get... Can you bear it? That was very, very tough indeed, but you made light work of Glacier, I can say that. I was determined after the last game. I owed it to her. <laughs> And also, of course, you're in desperate need of picking up some points. Yeah. So let's find out from uh, Andy Norgate what the time was. 18 seconds, 10 points. Woo! 10 points! Well done! Well done, Hannah! Andy, the good news giver, gets Hannah off the mark. Her brother John delighted. But that elbow, a worry. And now, to run the gauntlet for Australia, it's Catherine. <laughs> and our gladiator team is Rio. Whoa! <laughs> Laser, Fury, and Lightning. As we hand control of the game to our referee, John Forsyth. Contender, are you ready? Gladiators, are you ready? Three, two, one. Catherine Arlov making sure there's no Arlov lost here. Swings past Rio, both retreating all the time. Laser with a blast of power from that ramrod. Catherine ducks out of trouble and into Fury. Fury carrying with the pads. A better performance this from the Glamour Glad. Teaser up for a zap from Lightning. Lightning gets to the slower, but Catherine scores 10. No wonder it's her favourite event. Catherine, um, can I have a word? Um, that was pretty darn good. Thanks. Were you pleased with that? Yeah, I was really pleased. I was actually... Not really happy that I fell down on the ground because it gives them an opportunity to lie on you. And of course you lose, lose a few seconds, but I got through. You certainly did. Let's just find out what your time was, Andy. 17 seconds, 10 points. Well done, Catherine! 10 points! Catherine goes off on a lap of honour. Two maximums added to the scores. After three events, Catherine has 18 points. Hannah has 10. First to run the gauntlet in the men. Representing Australia, it's Paul Stubbs. Up against our gladiators, Rhino, Tower, Ace, Wolf, and Saracen. Our referee for this event is John Anderson. John, over to you. Contender!
Ford Stubbs from Queensland charges the Rhino and outflanks him with style. Next is the tower to topple. Tower with the power pads. The tower blocks and he's blasted away. Eight steams in. Not like him to be over the top. Wolfman tries to take the steam out of Stubbs, but driving Wolf back. Saracen ganging up with the ramrod. Paul knows Saracen's a safe pair of hands. Paul with the pile driving finish. He's there. Looks like ten to me. Paul survives and claims a souvenir. And the Aussies are happy with that result. Well, Paul, that really was a terrific run. One or two of them gave you a bit of trouble. In fact, it looked to me as if Tower gave you a little bit of trouble. Yeah, they're all pretty big. They certainly are. I mean, you're naturally exhausted, but uh, you did a good job. Yeah, I did my best. You certainly did. Let's just bring Andy in and find out what your time was. 20 seconds, 10 points. 10 points! Well done! He confirms our suspicions, a maximum for Paul. Looking at the crunching conclusion, Saracen got stuck in. Paul tried to come wide, Saracen used all his might, but Paul had plenty fight, untangled himself and was spared the rod. And now, representing the Brits, it's Mark. He's against Condor. believe this Vulcan getting a bigger boo than Wolf he won't like that this is a real grudge gauntlet gladiators looking for revenge on Mark John Anderson the game is yours Condor, Condor bats him away, Mark opens up a gap, Condor pressing wide but gets shoulder dummy, Tower the next bridgehead, Mark puts Tower in his place, and John Anderson's blown up again, what's up now? This is not a wrestling match, you are not allowed to grab, you must push. Well, let's see it again. Well, oh, it's true, Tower tried a bear hug on Mark, but Mark would have preferred the ref to have played the advantage. There are 21 seconds remaining. Three, two, one! Mark has to rebuild his momentum. Wolf can't close the gates. Taipan with the pads. Body slams Mark to the deck. Taipan more of a Taipan. You've grabbed the road and pulled them down. Move out the road. Well, that's Taipan told. Now it's all about Mark and Vulcan. Ty panned by the ref for wrestling, and this time Mark wouldn't have been able to extricate himself. There are 17 seconds remaining. Three, two, one. Mark versus Vulcan. I know who my money's on. Vulcan pushing him wide, but too little, too late. Vulcan mauled again by Mark. 17 seconds, the unofficial time. He was mullered. And Vulcan doesn't know when he's beaten. Vulcan shoved out of the way. Wolf getting stuck in. John Anderson trying to keep control. Taipan getting involved. All these Aussie glads are more fiery than Bobby full of wallaby fat. John Anderson getting stuck in to anyone who's nearby. Having to go either Mark or Ollie. I don't know about you, but uh, I want to go home. <laughs> yeah, that was a hard one, Matt. Um, Bring back happy memories. Happy memories, unhappy memories. Um, there was just... The game was OK, but they just kept grabbing me. Well, as you saw, John Anderson move them out of the way and he moved on to the next stage. Let's just find out in the meantime what your time was. 17 seconds, 10 points. 10 points, Mark, well done! The Andy Man confirms the fourth maximum in Gauntlet this evening. Wolf and Vulcan rehearsing for come dancing, leaving Mark to claim the applause. After three events, Paul moves up to 19 and Mark to a massive 38. In 1837, Roland Hill put forward the idea of a prepaid postal service. As a result, pillar boxes like this one sprung up all over the Victorian Bridge. That's good. Hey, Rio, I'm sending this card to my mum. What time is the last post? Um, last collection, 1930. 1930? You mean I'm 66 years too late? Boom, boom! And you all thought he was in misery. Nice joke, Vulcan. Joke? What's the joke? Well, we're all set for our next event, but just before we go on, we have some sad news. Hannah, uh, you've just come from the doctor, and what's he told you? Oh, well, basically, I went in for the last tackle and just hit my elbow badly. He doesn't know what it is. 
sending me for an x-ray and I can't grip with that. So in the interests of safety, we, we have to say goodbye to you here. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, that's sad news for Hannah. I think she's well, a big round of applause for the gutsy effort that you've put in thus far. Thank you. And congratulations to you. You've done your country proud. Well done, Hannah. Well, CJ Duffield, who's been, this morning was at work, and tonight is now fighting for Great Britain here on the Gladiators. Are you all prepared? Yeah, I'm, I'm prepared. I'm just really sorry that Hannah won't be able to continue. It's really sad, actually, to have to come in at this stage. Well, CJ, you've got a lot riding on your shoulders. Uh, obviously, the good work that Hannah's put in so far, and, of course, the, uh, the name of your country, the pride of Great Britain, is on your shoulders now, so we'll let you go off and get set. Thank you very much. Let's have a big round of applause and welcome CJ. <laughs> First up, for the women representing Australia, it's Catherine. Gladiator, Lightning! Lightning, the high flyer on Hang Tough, one of the truly great British gladiators. A televisual treat. Earlier, Aussie Catherine gave me a rundown on her contender CV. I just recently competed in the domestic series in Australia, and that recently went to air. I was actually the runner-up over there, but it was due to an unfortunate accident whereby I fell off the, the rings in Hang Tough and broke my collarbone. So I'm not real happy about it, and I'm here to make amends. Three, two, one! Well, nonetheless, lightning swings out, safe in the knowledge that this is not Catherine's most favourite event in the world. Catherine hails from Victoria, and when it comes to Hang Tough, she is not amused. Catherine on the left wing, lightning plotting the course of executive action. Catherine swimming right into trouble. Oh, there's a flurry of fives. Catherine's gridlocked, and lightning looking to oust the Aussie. Catherine one wing as lightning gets to work as only she can. She's got her. At least Catherine's content. She's again mentally on top of this event, which you might call a great barrier relief. As the crowd sing, let's see it again. And the lesson here is once lightning's got you wrapped up, you might as well quit. Catherine outside the scoring zone and thankfully doesn't prolong the agony. Our second lady for this event and her first time in the game, it's CJ for Great Britain. <laughs> against our Australian gladiator, Fury. Fury, a firm at his favorite, stands one meter 70 tall, weighs in at 60 kilos. Our standby senior, in comparison, looks to have a three kilos weight advantage. But on Hang Tough, weight is no advantage. Two, one. Fury will know that Senior Duffield is a driver in the British Army and served well as a contender in the National Gladiator Championships. And Fury, despite a name, one of the coolest customers in the Australian camp, never gets ruffled, and this will be no exception. But Celia swinging straight into her path. Oh, the Army driver stalls on the red ring, knees up, but Fury can cope with that. Opens up the trap and snaps it shut on the target. Brings those 60 kilos to bear on Celia's arm. Celia wanting to cruise his army through and through, and Fury wants unconditional surrender. She gets it. Celia can stand easy. It's all over. Hannah's supporters not happy to see that defeat. CJ, how does that compare to an Army assault course? Um, we don't actually have to swing on the rings on the Army assault course. We'll count that as a warm-up. You've still got another game to go, OK? But no points for you there, CJ. Never mind, thanks. Fury, you love it up there. I do, it's one of my favourite games. What about you guys? Yeah! yeah. Well, she did very well. It's hard to come in in a game like this. Sorry, no points. No points. Let's have a round of applause for Fury and welcome to the game, CJ! Celia down and Fury sums it up. After four events, Catherine remains on 18 and Celia on 10. Now we move into the men's event with Paul. And he's going to be facing the Wolfman. Well, the hairy beast can boast a great record on the rings. Stands a, a metre 83 and weighs 95 kilos. And the Tasmanian-born bricklayer is five centimetres smaller and is 14 kilos lighter. Contender, are you ready? Yeah. Louisiana, are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. 
Well, Wolf has been going a good few many years. Once performed in front of Her Majesty the Queen, well, she quite liked him, but Prince Albert wasn't impressed. And neither is Paul. A cloud of chalk fills the air from where Paul snatched the red ring from Wolf's grasp, crashing together like conkers. Wolf knows he's in for a battle here, swooping in, can't get a handle on his man. Wolf one ring, and in a lazy spin. Paul elects to come wide to stay out of trouble. Wolf manages to sort himself out, but Paul's matching him. Swing for swing. The platform and the maximum points beckon. Wolf with a desperate lunge. Paul's too slippery for the Wolf, and he's tantalizingly close to the 10 points. Oh, cruelly dragged away by the swing. This time, can he do it? Wolf's in no position to stop him, and Paul, one small step for a contender, but one giant leap for his score. The first successful crossing this year. They're clearly delirious, and he's clearly not. In fairness to the old chap, it's not often he's outmaneuvered on the rings, but Wolf gets the wrong side of Paul, can't defend his territory, and even when Paul needs another attempt to secure the points, there's plenty of time to spare. Well, a huge congratulations, Paul. You did that so beautifully. It was very classy. It's very hard. Well, I mean, two rings, two rings, and you snatched it right from in front of his nose. It was a race to the red. I mean, it was just amazing. It was really terrific. A great event, and you deserve your ten points. Well done. And, uh, I just think, if I was you, I'd feel a little embarrassed. I'll give credit where it's due. We both went for the double ring. I didn't ex no one's ever done that to me before. He got there before me. You know, so good luck to the guy. Let's hear it for the Wolfman and for Paul. Well done. Next up in the men's event, it's Mark. And he's going to be swinging it out against the King of the Rings. It's Taipan. Well, there's one victory in this Ashes series, making King of the Rings. I'll let you decide. The home crowd are keen to make sure. Especially Andrea, Mark's future sister-in-law, holding baby Harlan with his future wife Frankie in the white top. To John Forsyth. Contender, are you ready? Juliana, <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> Three, two, one. Well, Ty Pan made a bit of a time meal of taking down Emil Watson last week. Let's see if he swings as well as he pulls faces. Oh, and Mark swings right by him. Taipan in terrible trouble, and Mark continues to make a mockery of these Australian gladiators. He's nearly there in record time. Mark Everett, he's on in 21 seconds. Taipan, king of the rings? I think not. A magnificent effort from Mark Everett. Another chapter in the history books is written, and it's party time down amongst the family. Mark found himself with acres of space on the grid. Taipan tried to get back, but Mark was way ahead of him towed the platform but clung on to confirm his victory the excitement is extraordinary and there's still one event to go Paul has 29 and Mark has 48 the museum here at Blitz Hill has its own pigsty in fact it looks like Warrior's ex-girlfriend you bring me to the nicest places Paul. is that you or the pigs? Two things it's you! Oh, come on. These pigs don't want you to stench up their snouts. Sorry, boys. Take you down there. <laughs> For the UK, it's CJ. And our gladiator is Glacier. Enough to make a chill run down any contender's spine. She's 178 tall, weighs 74 kilos. That gives her an 8 centimeter height advantage over Celia, plus 11 kilos of weight-wise. 10 for a win, 5 for a draw, 0 for a defeat. Celia, a durable duelist, needs to turn up the heat to melt this Glacier, mixing and matching at the moment. Oh, a few tickles to the tongue from Glacier. They won't shift her, though, nor will those taps to the helmet. Celia with some pretty nifty backhanders. Oh, and a nice bash on the bonds. And it looks like Celia can take the best that Glacier has to offer. This is what she's used to doing at work, digging in and defending her position. Good performance. Keeping the Gladiator firmly in her place. Five points, thank you very much. Deep joy. And Glacier's glad that's done with for another week.
Well, Glacier threw some heavy stuff at Celia, but couldn't rattle her confidence. Celia responded with those stinging backhands and a few tasty taps to the top of the head. Well, the Brits have got five points. Let's see how the Aussies go. Representing us, it's Catherine. And our gladiator is Laser. John Forsyth, the game's yours. Contender, are you ready? Gladiator, are you ready? Okay. Well, that's it. We're all ready. And if you don't rumble, you're bound to tumble. Catherine is Australia's current wrestling and judo champion, so she knows how to dish it out. And Laser's not backward in coming forward, so there should be a real hammer time to be had by all. It's toe-to-toe -to -toe and blow-for-blow -blow stuff at the moment. And some serious roundhouses coming in there. Good work rate. Wow, Laser getting to grips with it now. Oh, but not with a stick. Throws away the match and gives Catherine 10 points on a plate. Well, laser steams in, cops a corker from Catherine, returns fire with a thunderous right, tries the backhand, and suddenly her pugil stick's on its way to the crash mat. Tries to take Catherine's stick, but knows you can't do that. Laser. I don't know if the TV cameras could pick it up, but from where I was standing, I could see the stuffing coming out of those poles. I was so determined to knock her off there, goodness gracious. She can be very lucky that I lost my pole. That's all I've got to say. Yeah, but I still, I'm still, i sure, though, that part of the reason it happened was that uh, Catherine was giving just as good as she was getting from you. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm not denying that. She gave me some good blows. Well, of course, the great news for you, Catherine, is 10 points. <laughs> just a big round of applause for Catherine and our gladiator, Laser. With just the eliminator left, the scores stand like this. Catherine, 28, Celia, 15. Saracen dummies his start and then opens up. This is Paul's least favourite event, and a barrage of blows being swapped and Paul acquitting himself well. This Aussie fighting like a bushman with a boiling billy down his breeches. But Saracen's got him. A couple of blockbusters and Paul surrenders his stick. A win for the number one son. Well worth seeing again. Paul easily gives as good as he gets. Saracen knows he's got a fight on his hands, unloads a couple of bombs, and they put pay to Paul. That's gone, and he's finished. Next up on Duel, it's Mark! And for all his sins, he's going to be facing Condor! Let's get this flying fiend measured up. Stands 180 tall and weighs 96 kilos. Served up with a few sprouts, this condor might make a nice change to the Christmas turkey. The Great British Mark is the same height, but 10 kilos lighter. Three, two, one! Mark first in the pecking order with an uppercut to the beak, and this condor will not let his flying from his nest, but Mark's in a roll and keen to leave egg on the Australian bird's face. Mark has the measure of the winged wonder, matching him shot for shot. This would be enough to turn Condor's hair white if it wasn't that couple already. A hammer and tongs tussle. Well, this will ruffle the Condor's feathers, the pace winding down, but Condor still winging the shots in. And Mark sensibly playing for the draw. He won't ship that big bird, doing just enough to give him a bit of a flap. John Anderson's hooter signals the end of a great contest. The bird man should really have swept up his prey, and Mark wasn't looking forward to it. But the home crowd are happy, and here's the man of the moment for a brief chat before the Eliminator. Well, Mark, I know you weren't particularly looking forward to this event, telling yourself it's only 30 seconds, but by goodness, you stood up there and you picked up your five points. Yeah. I knew this guy was fast. I see him training back, backstage. And I thought, I wonder what he's training for. And then somebody said he's against you, and I thought, oh, <laughs> oh damn. But I stood my ground and I got my five points. You certainly did, but very proud you certainly as we're going into the eliminator and condor i mean he put up a great fight because you're sort of twice as wide as he is he's very good yes it's good to see i hope everybody's having a good time here tonight yeah but certainly now that the brits are
of picking up one or two points. But I mean, he really was very, very strong, and you nearly had him on a couple of occasions. Yeah. Almost there, but that's the way it goes. Next time. Let's hear it for Condor and for Mark. Well done. After five grueling tests of grit and determination in this Ashes Challenge, Paul has 29 and Mark an incredible 53. Well, now that our contenders have successfully eliminated the Gladiators, all that remains is the Eliminator itself. Join us after the break for the Eliminator here on Gladiators. time where we'll be shortly be finding out who will be making up the numbers in our Ashes final. But first, let's have a look at the scoreboard. CJ's on 15 points, Catherine's on 28 points. That's a 13-point difference, giving Catherine a six-and-a-half second head start. Over to you, Mike. Thanks, Ulrika. Well, Catherine, as we just heard, a six-and-a-half second start, but the bungee web last week was a big equaliser. Yeah, right, but let me, let me sum it up this way. There's only one way, and that's the hard way, and let's hope that I do it the right way. Well, there's nothing uh, short of this being the hard way. This really is the assault course from hell. 60 seconds, what time do you think you're going to make it through? I don't really care what time I make it through as long as I get through first. CJ, you're relatively fresh having come in as a reserve halfway through the game. You all set for this? Yeah, definitely I'm all set for this. No. Any piece of apparatus that you're wary of or that we should watch you on? No. None at all? Okay. Well, you've both got the pride of your countries riding on your shoulders. Let's have a big round of applause for CJ for Great Britain and Catherine for Australia. <laughs> Our referee for this event, John Anderson. Catherine, you will go on my first whistle. CJ, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. 25-year-old Catherine Arla from Australia starts her eliminator run for a place in the Ashes final. Makes it to the bungee maze, and here comes Celia Duffield, face that worthy down Winchester. Six and a half seconds to make up, and she'll soldier on. Catherine onto the rope, a physiotherapist and personal trainer. She'll need all her professional skills to keep this great British Army girl at bay. Catherine on the hand ladder, and Celia onto the rope, and looks to be clawing back that lead. No gladiators to push back Catherine between here and the paper burst, just the tiring, testing, eliminator course. Celia very relaxed on the ladder, she's been trained to keep calm in these situations. Crosses the rollers for the great climb ahead. Catherine reaches the top, Celia could do with a fast net time here. Catherine along the gantry for the slide to the mat, hooks up, launches herself into thin air. Conserving her energy for the graveyard to come, splashes down with style. The haunting balance beam and travelator line waits onto the beam. And Celia coming in to splash down. It's a skidder as Catherine looks good on the beam. Hannah Owen's husband Trevor can sense an all-Australian final off the beam. And onto the hill from hell, the travelator. It holds no fears for Catherine Arla from Australia. And she swings into the Ashes final. And naturally a popular win amongst the Aussies. Here comes Celia, a fine effort by the great British contender, but in the end, that head start proved unassailable. Nevertheless, a valiant attempt. Congratulations, warm congratulations. I'm sure you understand the lack of excitement from the Brits' point of view. We've now got two female Australians in the Ashes final. Yeah, I'm sorry to the Brits, but um, Australians are really good competitors, and we always like to win. So but it's going to be a great show regardless of what happens because we've got great, Brit great gladiators, great Australian gladiators and great Australian contenders. We certainly have. Very well done to you and we look forward to seeing you next week in the final. Let's hear it for Catherine. CJ. Well, you answered your country's call halfway through tonight and you've still done Great Britain proud. A great effort there. Six and a half seconds though is a really, really tough lead to, to do anything about. I was hoping she might get a bit more stuck in the bungee, but she's obviously done a good recce and she didn't get stuck. I love this army talk. She's done a good recce. You were great up the cargo net too, and the crowd really got behind you when you hit it there because you were making up some good time. I really went for it. I really tried to just lift my legs up and go for it because I know my legs are strong and I knew I'd get up the travel later, but it's hard. Well, we've got some flowers to present to you, and I think the, uh, the Birmingham crowd would really like to say thank you very much, CJ, for putting up such a great effort and for coming in. I've had to thank them all as well, it's been great. All right. CJ, well done.
Well done indeed. Came to the rescue when the call went out. Catherine delighted with her performance. Rushes to share the glory with her supporters. The Wizards of Oz all together there. But now it's time for the men. That 24-point lead for Great Britain's Mark Everett will convert to a massive 12 seconds head start in this eliminator. Paul, you've not been a man of many words tonight. Not many. How are you feeling? Not too bad. Oh, you're looking okay. I mean, that's surprising because, of course, you've got a huge head start, Mark. Yeah, I've got a good head start, but um, I can't be too confident because many a good gladiator and contender has been taken out of the bungee rope, so... We'll just have to wait and see. The very best of luck to the two of you, and we'll see you both at the end. Good luck to Mark and to Paul. Over to John Forsyth. Mark, you will go on my first whistle. Paul, you will go on my second. Three, two, one. Mark Everett from Boston in Lincolnshire, a former Gladiators champion. When we first met him, he was a machinist in a duvet factory. Now he's working for the social services. Finishes the bungee mesh, and here comes Paul Stubbs for Australia. Plenty to do, but he has the capability, doesn't he? Mark dispenses with the rope climb. Now he'll wind up the bike. Paul still locked in the rubber room. Fighting his way through as Mark pedals furiously to place a great British face in the Ashes final. Onto the rollers and the cargo nets. Good, confident climbing. Paul's hands are blur on the bike. The Aussie delegation with him every inch of the way. Mark tops the nets. Frankie and Andrew are taking nothing for granted. Mark hooks up for the fastest part of the course. Paul finishing his climb as Mark splashes down. Young and old alike on the edges of their seats, nail-biting tension. Will we see a Brit in next week's final? Paul hooks up for the quick ride down. Mark onto the Travelator. Will he get there? Yes! A win for Great Britain. Mark Everett swings through. A real moment of national pride. The family are jubilant, and rightly so. Paul storms up the Travelator, a superb contender at credit to Australia. Mark, well done. We've got to put this around your neck. Sometimes you get the breaks, you got the breaks tonight, but you're also a fantastic contender. Well done. Thank you very much. It's just been one of those days. Everything's gone right. I'm sorry, if you just run the eliminator, you, you, you're hardly out of breath. Yeah, it was hard, it's a hard minute. I'd like to know my time though. 102, 102 is the time, just over the minute, but we've got the bungee maze in there at the start too. Here's Frankie, and look at this, the boy, sound asleep. It's been a long night, but that's great. Congratulations, folks. Let's have a big round of applause for Mark. Through to the finals next week, representing Great Britain. Well, Paul, tremendous disappointment there for you, but I have to say you did incredibly well, bearing in mind Mark's head start. Yeah, I tried my hardest. He's a, a great athlete, probably the best one I've seen. So well done to him. And well done to you. It's been great to have you on the show. Obviously, the Brits are relieved to have somebody in the final, but we've enjoyed your company. Let's, everybody, let's hear it for Paul. Good sporting crowd here at the NIA. The pride of the Aussies and the pride of a dad. Carl, I'm unimpressed, slept through it all. But that says it all. And a fantastic effort by Mark there. Two Australian contenders for the females next week, but an Aussie guy and a Brit guy, so it's still not home and hose for the Australians. It's going to be a big match. We'll see you next week for the grand final of the Ashes here on Gladiators. See you Goodbye. then. <laughs> for safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators. And there's more adrenaline fueled action with another episode of Gladiators on the way in a few moments here on Challenge. Coming up next on PIC, they're picking up some air miles as they jet off to Australia. They must be flying by TARDIS to get there that quick. It's nothing to declare.